Okay, hello and welcome, uh, members of the Chinese Medicine Practitioner Meetup Group, uh, hosted by Camwo. Uh, my name is uh, Thomas Liang. I'm the organizer and your host for this um, evening, or it could be afternoon, depending on where you are uh, logging in from. Uh, I want to take a moment to welcome new members to our group. Uh, I hope you enjoy what we have for you uh, tonight, and hopefully many more events in the future. Uh, the mission of our meetup group is to connect members with respected authorities on subject matters within our profession. The events are always free and our speaker suggestions come from you, the members. So if you have suggestions for speakers, for future speakers, please email us and just let us know. Um, and this is our 133rd uh, event, uh, but this is really only our 11th online event. And, um, and I remember putting out a survey and asking people how important is it for people for us to meet in person. And uh, I think the um, response came back is online is much more favorable. <laughs> but at some point, uh, you know, when things the pandemic winds down, hopefully uh, we will definitely uh, have some of the events that are live as well. Okay, so anyway, by attending uh, tonight, each of you will receive a $20 coupon via email. So uh, we will email you uh, at the um, at the end of the uh, tomorrow, probably most likely <laughs> tomorrow. Okay, so tonight's uh, talk will be approximately 1.5 hours, and and it will end around I think uh, about about eight o'clock or so. Okay, so you got plans, whatever you're going to be here for until eight o'clock. So here's some ground rules. Please mute, uh, some ground rules. Please mute your microphone and hold off any questions until our guest speakers. Uh, give us the cue to ask questions. If uh, there's a burning question, uh, please feel free to uh, press the button or raise it and put your comment in the box. Uh, but there will be a, a time enough and at the end to ask your questions. Okay, so let me uh, just read a little bit, introduce uh, Shannon, Shannon Gilmartin, uh, certified massage therapist. She's with Modern Cupping Therapy Education Company. Is that approved? Continuing education provider for professional body workers, including acupuncturists. She's a, it is NCCAOM and California Board of Acupuncture certified. Massage therapist, the NCBTMB National, New York State, and Florida CE broker. Athletic trainer, uh, that's a BOC certification, and also a physical therapist. Uh, Ms. Gilborn is also the author of the best selling book. Uh, the Guide to Modern Cupping Therapy, a step-by-step -step source for vacuum therapies. So anyway, Shannon, hi, and hi, uh, welcome, and thank you for speaking to our group. And uh, let me start by uh, confessing that I feel inadequate, totally inadequate in my cupping techniques. So I'm really excited about tonight's uh, lecture. Uh, I, I was just speaking to someone earlier before we got on that I recall that um, the cupping that I was I've got to be learning in acupuncture school. I, I, I feel like I don't remember it being taught extensively. So mm -hmm. I suspect I'm not the only one uh, who also feel that way. So I feel there is so much to learn about um, cupping. Anyway, can you give me a brief intro on how you came to be a cupping authority? And, um, <laughs> and I'm sure that you didn't just wake up one day and, and start giving MCCAOM sort of approved classes. So. If you can just tell us a little bit about your journey. That would be great. Sure, of course. Yeah, thank you. That's quite a lead up. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so yeah, I fell into body work um, plus 20 years ago, uh, kind of for selfish reasons, just because I had a lot of injuries from, you know, histories of car accidents and stories I could tell you other days. But cupping was one of the first continuing education classes I took, and it changed my life. Uh, some of the scars on my own body, people don't even know I have them until I draw your attention to them, like a very large scar on my face. It changed my life. So um, I am definitely an analytical person. I need science and tangible, tangible evidence. That class prompted me to study more, and I soon thereafter became one of their first educators. But the um, the curriculum wasn't as comprehensive, and again, science based as I wanted. So years go by, and I eventually decided to open our own company for the scientific base and make it a topic that can be approachable and applicable across the body working professions. Because, you know, the, some of the places I would train with cupping, they are teaching me, the massage therapist, Chinese medicine applications, which made no sense because I'm not a practitioner. 
So it, eventually when we started our company, I was shortly thereafter asked to write the book that I'm very proud of now. And from that, you know, so many classes have come out of the information that we provide, which is we have nine days of curriculum options. We're growing a couple more. Um, and over the years, acupuncturists have wanted to take our classes, but they want the CEUs because like you said, the, the limited training many people confess to in their programs, some programs have more than others, but it's there's just so much to it that ultimately when we approached NCCAOM and gave them our paperwork, they said, wow, okay, yeah, we'll approve you because I'm not an acupuncturist nor a Chinese medicine practitioner. So I had some advocates from around North America speak on my behalf. And here I am awarded a continuing education provider through that company, as well as the state of California and the other boards that you mentioned as well. We just make it available to anyone who does body work and wants to use cups. We make sure it's safe and give it a lot of the dynamic potential. It truly does grasp. That, that, that's fantastic. And we're all looking forward to uh, picking up some something uh, from, from tonight and um, be better covers. How's that? <laughs> I would love to share a little bit of that information with you all here today. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, well, I guess you can get started whenever you like. We're ready to go. Thank you. All right, so yeah, uh, as Tom said, I am a solely a massage therapist. It's 20 something years under my belt. Everything from manual lymph drainage certified to neuromuscular, even Eastern practices like Thai massage. I just, I'm a mixed bag of body work, but all of it Ultimately, I incorporate cups in one fashion or another, you know, from surgical and rehabilitative, you name it, cups, we teach you, the body worker, how to take it into your practice. And I always love to start off any educational conversation with some history of cups, because, for example, when you and I were speaking earlier about how acupuncture has a very rich history of cupping, it absolutely is the most known throughout the world and the most prominent of applications. It does talk about using cups in the Yellow Emperor's book, and there are many quotes, and it's obviously very rich in the practices, but it is known the world over. There are examples of cups in, uh, carved into hieroglyphs in ancient China and how they were written in the Abir's papyrus to use cups to heal vertigo, pain, menstruation, and ultimately encourage a healing crisis in the body. So ancient China has notoriety with it. Even the Muslim practices, a lot of the cupping is, it's actually called hajima from al-hajim, which means to suck out. They do a lot of the bloodletting and there's writings in the ancient scrolls, the hadithas, many times of examples of them using cups. And, you know, there's many examples around Europe and French hospitals, even in the Americas, North, Central and Southern, there's, medicine women scratchers using cupping. I have the great fortune to volunteer in Guatemala with Global Health Works. And the first time I taught the local health practitioners the cupping, they looked at me like, what am I gonna show you? We've been doing cupping for generations. But then I showed them some of the cups that we use and then also how to work with scar tissue or some of the facial paralysis they were experiencing more than what they knew, but cups are known around the world. They cross cultural barriers. And so it's great to know that history. And even in you know, the Americas at the turn of the 20th century, doctors had them in their medicine bags. Um, but as the world progressed and Western medicine has its standards of measurement, cupping works from the skin in and they like their medical standards of measurement and a lot of that was pharmaceutical surgery, so on and so forth you couldn't get the same results twice. And that's really an interesting thing to understand with cupping, but ultimately when it's done right, everybody has a positive result, regardless of what you're working on. So we will talk about a lot of different applications of this one technique that you'll learn tonight and how you can add it into either what you're already doing or perhaps getting you started in cupping. Cause we meet people that have used cups for 20 years and this one technique is a game changer or perhaps people are getting started and they've seen adverse reactions because cupping is done too strong or too long or just incorrectly, if you will, for the wrong client. So we teach all of that. And this technique is absolutely crucial. So the world knows cups and they know a lot of traditional applications we'll get to in a moment. But, you know, my company, it's the most important thing for us. We have two primary objectives. One, it's so people understand the physiological effects of cups on the body. 
like I said, I don't teach Chinese medicine cupping, nor do I teach athletic trainers how to do athletic training protocols. I am a massage therapist. So when I teach, for example, a class of just massage therapists, maybe we all have the same conversation, but we are teaching people what cups do on a physiological level and leave the clinical diagnosis and treatment protocols to the practitioner. We simply want the cups leading to my second point. It, we want you to optimize the therapeutic results available from cupping body work. So we are all about making the best of what you can do with the cups safely and effectively. So um, with that, everything that I do discuss in this presentation and moreover in our classes, it is verified and comes from research papers and articles that are in the National Institute of Health database. We do offer the reference materials in the back of my book that I wrote. We offer them in the classes and everything else is verified, even excerpts from Ilke Chirali's book, the cupping book that we all or most of us are familiar with. So, um, but the three primary physiological responses to cups on the body are ultimately, it comes down to negative pressure and it has vasodilation and enhanced fluid exchange. So that's the combination effect that allows for a lot of therapeutic potential. And so when I say potential, there are many ways to vary the applications of cups and when you vary your applications, you have the potential for, yes, encouraged circulation. That's first and foremost, because people are very familiar with that. The movement of the circulation of blood, of lymph, even of energies, right? Chi, prana, and Ayurvedic practices, depending on the language of body work you speak, it, it moves things through the body. Cups also alleviate adhesions. And the this definition of an adhesion is any two anatomical structures that are stuck and inter interconnected that shouldn't be so. So we address everything from the skin, like cellulite, to deeper involvements like scar tissue, perhaps C-section scars. And there are so many layers of interconnection and entanglement in the body that cups, that lifting, that negative pressure makes the space and separates it in a logical manner to allow for healthier tissue thereafter, which we'll get to a little more clarity in a moment. Um, cups help to clear congestion and stagnation uh, and can potentially release interstitial debris. So when I say congestion and stagnation, that is, those are terms that are generally used in the Chinese medicine conversation. And I leave that to, again, your discretion and your understanding. But I also talk about cups using to clear the congestion associated with cellulite or perhaps the stagnation of the colon or even pulmonary condition that are pulmonary congestions. And there are different ways to use cups to affect all of those. We'll, we'll talk about some of the digestive issues this evening. Um, cups lift, rehydrate, and manipulate fascia. So that is one of my favorite points to make. As a body worker, we spend, I spend my career trying to melt fascia, <laughs> trying to soften the body. And when you experience what cups do, tangibly in your hands, there's an immediate difference. And a lot of our fascial therapists, they have a whole different appreciation of how to do that. Continuing on, we can use cups to address inflammation. Now, whether it's acute or chronic, there are two different ways to approach that. And we do cover that in one of our classes, but different applications yield positive benefits for both. And that's huge with cups. Uh, also continuing, this is a big point. Cups cause micro traumas in tissue, but not tissue damage when it's done correctly. And what that means is the negative pressure of cups, there is a lot of misunderstanding or people try to push that you have to have the bruising, that you have to have the damage. And it's more about low grade tissue damage to encourage neovascularization, which is another benefit of cups. But the micro traumas, that is the petechiae and the ecchymosis, even some of the purpura from that negative trauma to the lower tissues, the capillary results. Ultimately, we're not causing bruises. And again, that's a big thing that we talk about in the company, trying to keep it safe. And we teach people how to see the difference of one to another. And the technique that we're gonna talk about in a moment really helps to make it most comfortable for people so they don't experience that pain. And a lot of times when people come in and they say, I, I'm curious of cups, but I heard it's painful. There is a difference between absolute pain and that therapeutically beneficial like edge we can teeter on 
right? People know the difference of pain and we work towards the betterment. If there's tissue dysfunction, you have to break it down to then build it up. And that's where that neovascularization or the angiogenesis comes in potentially from cups. So those two are huge and they work together. And lastly, for a benefit and definitely not least, they alleviate excessive pressure on sensory organs which can lead to a reduction in soft tissue pain. And in a few moments when I talk about some of the systems we address, we'll, we'll talk about superficial pain patterns, like for example, with fibromyalgia and how this technique can be used to help those people differently than perhaps before. So all of this, the way that we discuss this material, cups can affect as far as four inches into the human anatomy as designated by O.K. Chirali. And when you experience some of this work, think about the anatomy you're working on, that lift, the stretch that I'll show you in a few moments, that's where you get that deeper effect in the tissue without having to grab the tissue so with strong suction. And therefore, every system of the body is affected and there can receive benefit. Um, so there's a lot that you can do with cups. And we are gonna get into it now with the techniques. So most people that are familiar with cupping know two, perhaps three techniques. And a lot of them do come from uh, very well-known standard applications. First and foremost is the stationary cup. Everyone knows that if you know cupping the circles, they're right over the location you wanna put them. They address the specific point of interest, whatever that is in your practice. It could be an acupuncture point or perhaps acupressure. It can be trigger points for us soft tissue therapists, reflex or neurolymphatic. But whatever point you wanna release and bring all of that benefit to, that's a stationary cup. And those do allow for the strongest suction pressure when the body welcomes that pressure. And this technique will help you get there with that stronger pressure without the discomfort, if that's your intention. Now that's one technique people are familiar with. The other is moving cups. So a lot of us know, right? That fast, vigorous movement up and down the back lines, especially if people are most familiar with working alongside the spines. We use them all over the body, but there's a lot of direction and knowledge of lymphatics and vasculature and endangerment sites, but the moving cups, they're just an incredibly versatile technique. You can use them to treat the more general areas. And this is where we get into adding more techniques to do body work, right? Like it's hard to take it out of my hands because I can do this with cups and we can move them around, right? But all of these, uh, some people are also familiar with flash cupping and that is a very popular uh, Chinese medicine application, especially when it comes to pulmonary applications. And we do address that a little bit. So this technique we're gonna talk about in a minute is a little bit of an adaptation from that. And we'll also mention uh, using fire for the technique we'll talk, we'll use this evening. But either of those techniques, the people generally go for strong suction because they wanna grab the tissue and they wanna release it as soon as possible. But going back to the discomfort that the recipient feels, that can be a major deterrent. And oftentimes I'll meet people that have had cupping and they do not want it, no matter what I say. And I'm not here to convince you, but people come to you know, my clinic because they are there for a reason, whether they just had an orthopedic surgery and they have scar tissue and they're in need of the rehabilitative potential I can offer or they just heard cupping is great for muscles and they want those little hickeys all over their body. <laughs> you know, everyone has a different reason why they are interested in cupping, but the common denominator that creates um, a lack of interest is pain and, and injury. And so we're trying to avoid that with a technique like the lift and release we'll talk about because cupping really should never hurt. Even the lightest pressure creates that lift and can affect the muscle that's right under the surface. You don't have to pull it all up in there because perhaps that person's dehydrated or they have a traumatic history and it's just too aggressive for their body and more happens um, to release or reaction than they were anticipating because the cupping was too strong. So I will segue. Um, Let's go ahead, Tom, if you would show me that first slide, please, those thermographic images, let everyone see these. So the two techniques, we talk about stationary and we talk about moving. And in these images, Tom's gonna pull up for a moment. When I wrote the book, uh, again, I love science. So I needed to have some, some facts of showing you what cups are doing. 
right? So I love thermographic imaging. They really do tell a story. Now, if you look at these four, there's one other picture that isn't here because it re is regarding a stationary cup, but lots of you would probably be interested to see that fifth picture because you see cold physically pulled to the surface in little blue circles from stationary cups over this person's back area. It's fascinating, but to keep on task for this evening, Thermographic images tell a story of temperatures in a tissue and they can show you where things are dysfunctional or perhaps identify areas of pain and inflammation. So in this, this whole series was done in 30 minutes. On the far left, the person is sitting in a chair, a massage chair, her, head, her arms are up and her head is resting on it. She was complaining of upper right shoulder neck pain and she had been up in a cold, cold temperature the week before. I had never met this woman and she was just a, a demonstration for what I wanted to do with cups. What we did was, you can see all of the, the cool is her normal circulation. You see the white hot. Thermographic imaging is like a rainbow. The blue is the coldest, goes through green, up through or, uh, yellow, orange, red, white being the most heat or inflammation in an area. So she was complaining of neck tension, pain, especially in the right shoulder. And you can see that track down to her mid thoracic around the spine. When she sat there, I did moving cups. You can see in the next image for 10 minutes and the moving cups were very gentle. They were nothing hurt this woman. And the great way to understand that is in the next image, she's so relaxed, her arms are now down by her side, <laughs> excuse me. But in that second image, as a, as a body worker, I am watching to make sure that she isn't twitching and flinching with pain, right? I'm asking her, is that comfortable? I'm checking in to make sure she's, and all she kept saying is that feels really good, thank you. That feels nice, thank you. But occasionally it would get stuck somewhere, perhaps over her shoulders where it's really restricted, common sites of tension in soft tissue. So rather than force the cup through that area, I use this lift and release technique to soften every speed bump I encounter. So after 10 minutes, Everything is moving softly, freely. The tissue is soft, pliable, and it's visibly nice and red. We like that kind of hyperemia with body work, but it's also warm, soft, and pliable. And she says it feels really good. I don't wanna overdo it because with my visible cues in the third picture, no cups sat between photo two and photo three. From those three, Na the physiological responses, that natural vasodilation and enhanced fluid exchange. When you do cupping to the point where you get those therapeutic results, those cues when to say when, the body naturally keeps the blood moving to the surface area. You don't have to do it so much that you could create swelling. And that's where the damage potential is. So knowing when to feel, when to see, when to understand that's enough. The fourth picture, another 10 minutes or so, all the circulation has now receded right? Because we encourage circulation to the distal points and then the lymph, the, the venous return recedes. So at the right picture, you see all that beautiful, even distribution of blood circulation. The tension out of her neck is definitely dissipated. And she said it felt wonderful. And her testimonial in the book, she just, she sang about cupping and she had never heard of cupping other than the painful marks before. So I love showing that. And the technique helped get this uh, result comfortably and effectively, right? All together for her betterment. So Tom, I'm done with that one, thank you. So we will have another slide in a few moments. Now this lift and release technique, oh, we'll come back to that pretty one. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, we got we got pause, yep. So I'm gonna keep talking about this technique. Can you flip it back to me? So this lift and release technique, it, is, it has a plunger-like effect on the tissues. And what does that mean? The lift and release, it helps to stimulate the fluid exchange, right? And it, it makes the, the quick change in the tissue possible for those stationary or moving cups, if that's what you wanna do. You can do this very simply in one location, because maybe there's a scar under the skin. I'm just using my little face cup, I'll show you in a moment, right? Or perhaps I have a lot of restrictions up my forearms. We can use it to loosen up an area and perhaps slide the cup thereafter, right? Because maybe it's restricted. That's how tight my arm is and there isn't a lot of lubricant on it right now. We'll talk about that in a moment. 
So the lift and release can be done in one location or across a region, like I will demonstrate on my model in a few moments. And it helps to introduce the technique. It helps to make that tissue less sensitive and quickly responsive, all for the betterment of the client. So how do you do it? It's pretty simple. And this is where it's that adaptation of flash cupping. So uh, what were you what you're going to do if I'm going to just keep using my face cup? You squeeze the cup and we'll talk about fire and manual pumps in a moment, which I will show you. You squeeze it, you attach it to the skin. You want to lift it up away from the body until you feel a slight tension engage, right? So you pick it up and then you release the tension, you release the cup. It's very simple. I'm going to get a different cup just to show you a better grip. So with that understanding, perhaps I'm trying to work along that forearm, right? These jelly cups, a lot of jellyfish cups, people are really familiar with, they help to create that lift and that stretch without that stationary cup, maybe if it's uncomfortable or there's some vasculature you're trying to avoid, or maybe I'm just hypersensitive to it, but you can see how red my arm gets really quickly and I don't need to have a stationary cup there. Maybe it doesn't fit. Maybe there's body hair, right? We address all of that. So considering that, this is the technique you can use all over the body. And again, we address every system of the body, but for tonight's purposes, I'm gonna address five in specific, the skin, the integumentary system. We're gonna talk about the circulatory, emphasizing the lymphatics, the nervous system and how lift and release can be incorporated as well as the muscular. And then we're gonna end with digestive. So. First and foremost, the skin, that's the first point of contact. And people understanding that cupping helps to encourage circulation, the microcirculation at the capillary level and how it feeds the blood to the skin. What's most important for healthy skin is that blood circulation. And if people have challenges for whatever reason, cupping is so beneficial to bring the blood in, but maybe they have circulation challenges. Again, we'll talk about circulation in a moment, but think about the appearance of the skin and the most delicate skin on the whole body is the face. <clears throat> so if you lose, if, you, if you're familiar with the facial cupping, a lot of people are familiar with this sliding, right? Hold on a second, rule number one. We have to have that oil on the face before we try and get anything really going here. So to work on the skin, the delicate skin of the face, yeah, we can slide it, right? And that can look a little bit perhaps uncomfortable for some people. Why not warm it up, right? That lift and release. You see how it stretches my skin? This improves the tonicity. It helps to do that fluid exchange, bring healthy blood with the nutrients in, that collagen boosting, everything, right? Maybe you're working on someone who's had Bell's palsy and they have that slack in the skin and you don't wanna to be too aggressive because moving cups can be aggressive. But facial cupping is so beneficial, but we don't ever wanna mark the face, right? Because people are very averse to that on their face as they should be depending on what you're working on. But the cosmetic aspect, we use it to clear sinuses, but it's like all of this face health starts at the skin and it has to be comfortable. And the facial cupping, it's absolutely one of the most popular applications, but you have to understand the lift and release to get that done, especially when you're around the delicate eye tissue, because if you overstretch that, the recipient's not gonna be a happy one. However, even when you talk about working down the face, we're not gonna be sliding in the front of the neck. That's an endangerment site and never a stationary cup. We have articles that say no aggressive cupping in the front of the neck. It can cause intimal tears, potentially lead to a hemorrhagic stroke. Never aggressive cupping in any of this region. The lift and release is the only technique to be used for that. Um, but go ahead. It's also, like I said, it helps to introduce it to the skin and test for sensitivities. So Tom, would you show that second slide, please, for the scar? This is one of our most shocking uh, pictures that people see. So this, I, I tried to do a, a promotion with this image. And again, I, I had a client who donated her knee to my cause. It's pretty traumatic. She had a total knee replacement and the left image was taken a week after her surgery. You can see the vasculature is pretty traumatized. 
um, her skin overall wasn't healing very well. And normally you can work on, around, on and around scars approximately one to two months after surgery. She had such a, a challenging recovery that we waited eight weeks to start. But if you look, <clears throat> excuse me, look at that right image. That took me eight months from her surgical date to get those results. And what we're doing is we're using these cups as you approach the area or you work around areas that have had lymphatic challenges, the lift and release is the tester. Ever any sensitivity, any discomforts, you don't use other techniques, right? The lift and release is the introduction and you use it as you move through an area. If there's anything that's stuck or restricted, do not force it through it, lift and release through that spot. So those scar results are extraordinary and we, do so much great work with scars. Um, a lot of times people hear cupping for scars and they do absolutely question what we're doing. It's because of techniques like this, in addition to others, how we're adapting cupping for the betterment of the body we're working on because cupping can offer so much, right? Even some of these scars that have numb sensations, we'll talk about nerves in a few moments. So thank you, Tom, I'm all set with that image. But that one, that's an extraordinary one for our history. Um, so now moving on, let's talk about circulation, right? So it is important to understand that cupping helps to stimulate down to that micro circulation, but it also helps as it distributes the blood and encourages that lymphatic return, right? That exchange of fluids. So as we're thinking about washing things out with the tissue, um, I'm also a manual lymph drainage therapist. And so a lot of the work we do for MLD is gently with our hands, repetitive, trying to stretch the skin and the lymph capillaries and just move things along, right? And it's very repetitive and methodical. But sometimes that positive pressure can be too much for some people. Um, Tom, would you go ahead and show that next slide, please? This one is pretty phenomenal as well. I'm getting there a few minutes. That one, yeah. So we have this course solely designated to therapeutic cupping for lymph drainage because we're using these cups to address surface tissues and especially to move lymph fluids. Now this client, she had a, this is an image the same day she took this picture. She didn't even tell me. She showed me afterwards. I said, I need those pictures because <laughs> she was just curious because she's no one done with cupping otherwise. So we talk about cupping used to clear stagnation and congestion and encourage circulation, all of this stuff, all of these benefits. The residual bruising you see on the lateral aspect of her foot from her five week post avulsion fracture, the blood was not moving. And I do have a close network of professional body workers, including acupuncturists, who I sent her to after this, this treatment because she had so much stagnation. But what I did for her was just facilitate her own body's washing, right? It's that exchange of fluids, that fluid exchange is enhanced with cups and gave it the directional guidance of lymphatic movement. So we address the whole leg, right? From the groin down. And as you got to this area, I was using these little face cups over those sites. That's five weeks after the break, barely touching the skin. Because to do this lymph movement, you're only stimulating the lymph capillaries that attach on the underside of the dermis. So it's very sensitive, very gentle. From the top picture to the bottom picture, is the same day, is five hours once we wash it. And I could see it almost erasing during the session. And again, another indication that you're done. It was getting warm, it was feeling softer. She started getting a little hypersensitive. All of that comes in to understand when you're done with cupping. And this technique is always what you use to test over an area. We never get too strong with it, right? So that's that one. I love that image. So Tom, we're all set with that one. Thank you. Now I'm gonna show on my, on my model, I have a model here. We're gonna demonstrate some work uh, to address the nervous system next, and then we'll get into the muscular system and lastly, digestive. So first and foremost, talking about with lighter suction pressure, right? Again, various temperatures can have, uh, various suction pressures can evoke different results. So for example, fibromyalgia. 
uh, some research indicates that people suffering from fibromyalgia have a hyper concentration of nerve endings around the capillaries in their skin that when disturbed from pressure can cause pain reception in the brain. So that's why some of the fibromyalgia clients need the lightest pressure possible or else there's an adverse reaction. So now enter cupping, okay? So I am going to rotate the camera and show you my demonstration model. We're gonna talk about some light pressure and then we're gonna show some deeper pressure because cups are known to also stimulate into the peripheral nervous system, right? Get that feedback loop of discomfort into the central nervous system, break the pattern, break the cycle. So hopefully you all can see her when I get in position. And if I need to adjust anything, let me know. So working on a model is always a good thing to help people understand what we're talking about. And she's a very patient recipient. Now making sure you all can see. Perfect. Okay. So working along the back line of the body is how we indirectly affect the central nervous system via addressing the peripheral nerves. So first and foremost, as any cupper would know, if you're going to try moving things around, you've got to have some of that oil, cream, or lotion. I am a big fan of a nice fragrance-free oil because my intention here, now you don't necessarily need a lubricant to just attach, right? But if someone's dehydrated or there's a lot of body hair, you need to have some kind of a medium to make the connection and most importantly, make the cup move if that's your intention, right? So as we get her prepared for what I'm gonna demonstrate, Remember, I'm talking now about the, the nervous system and addressing just the surface, all those nerve endings that are in the skin, correct? So I'm going to demonstrate first with my manual pump gun. People have their favorites. I have mine. You have yours. Um, I will come back to the fire cupping at the end of this conversation and how you can incorporate it um, with the technique we're talking about tonight, okay? But in this moment, so just talking to use the lift and release, it's very, very light. I want to actually bring this in a little closer, if I may, so that you all can see a little bit better on her skin what's going on here. All right. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Okay. Got to work with a room I'm in. Okay, great. <laughs> so to do this ever so lightly, right? That alone allows that skin to receive the stretch and helps to decompress those nerve endings. Now people see me do this. I'm barely using my finger to break the seal. I'm not popping it off, right? That can be unsettling if we're trying to relax somebody or if they're a hypersensitive person. So again, I can just do that very gentle lift and release this is also a great way to introduce it for anyone receiving cupping because it starts to calm them down, right? It's relaxing, it's soothing. I do this for almost every client that comes in. I don't care if I've worked on you once or a hundred times because it helps them, their body be more responsive to what's going on, right? Uh, yeah, they are plastic cups. Mm -hmm. So this lift and stretch, you can, can you see, I get a little lift with my hands. I physically pull it away from the body till I feel a tension engage because her muscles are so tight. It's not going to let me lift, but so far, looser skin, more relaxed muscles. You'll see a bigger stretch. And when I show in the abdomen, you'll see how it, it's a little different in the response, right? So perhaps I'm doing this nice lift and release just to relax. Like I talked about. Or maybe you're trying to affect those deeper areas and get into the deeper peripheral nerves. This strong suction can be shocking to people, right? And I've, when people say no pain, no gain, that is not what we are talking about here. That is completely defeats the purpose, right? We are do no harm first and foremost in body work. We want to help you feel better. So if I want to have that deeper suction, sure. But I'll do a lift and release. And then if I want to, I'll pick the location and I'm going to say like right here, she's really tight. I'll do a lift and release with some strong pressure. So she feels it on the muscle. Does that pressure feel okay? Good. Do you like it? 
<laughs> That's always another question, right? They can just lay there and be a model, but she has nice relaxed breathing while I do this over areas of tension. And if you can see just this reaction, I'm gonna leave that cup there. I want you all to see the redness. Oh, I can hardly do it. Hold on a second. The redness of the tissue. Oh, can I, can I get that? I can do it, yep. How, how red it gets with just the lift and release. It already went away, right? It was a very quick reaction because it's just that gentle. It got nice and pink, but I'm trying to focus on the demonstration and I wish I had, you know, the spider camera so you can see closer. <laughs> but this allows for you to get these deeper suctions without discomfort for the person first and foremost, right? So maybe we're trying to do that relaxation and they like deeper pressure in body work. This is still soothing. And then if I wanna attach my stationary cups for my application down the back line of her body, so be it, right? But everything is softer and more receptive, okay? So that is where the nervous system comes into play. Understanding that we're calming the body down stimulating the autonomic response to relax the person rather than shock them and have, you can see people, their proprioceptive reactions just tighten up. And we don't want that. We don't want them to block them. It's just like a deep tissue massage. People get in there too strong and people clench, they tighten up. We don't want anything to do with that, okay? And now you can see some of the redness in her back, neck and shoulders, but I am going to see if I can bring this down and give you a better view. I don't know that I can. Can you all see that okay? Can you see it like her back pretty well, Tom? Yep, okay. Yep, doing the best I can here to make sure that you all see it. So now I'm gonna go right into some muscle work, right? So as a body worker, first and foremost, a lot of the work we end up focusing on is, like I said, trying to manipulate that fascia. And as a body worker, when we press into people, there is that nice reaction and that softening, but if someone's already tight, that added pressure is just adding to an already compressed environment. So this is where cupping is really fun. Cups actually stimulate the Golgi tendon organ proprioceptor in the muscles that initiates the elongation. So hypertonic muscles, right? So if you have someone not in a spasm, that's different. We're not cupping a spasm, but hypertonic contracture, you can use these cups to absolutely melt muscles. So coming back to this application, right? If I know her back is so tight and restricted, great. Maybe I wanna slide the cup, but everywhere, like right there, you can see how it sticks. I don't force it. I will lift and release and do a couple other techniques in there and soften that. Now she's got a beautiful adhesion right there and it's sticky. So maybe I want to sit there and loosen it up. I always ask, like, how's that pressure feel? Good. Do you feel that tension in there? Yeah, find, I find a little knot, right? So we're all about stationary cups, sure. But rather than put it on there, it's already tight. Loosen it up a little bit, create the change, and then apply your stationary cup, right? Leave it on there and then check it when your timing is done. I personally work with less than five minutes of stationary cups and I will remove them and reassess. And if there is a cue that I should not do cupping again, perhaps they're having some of that superficial lymphatic stagnation, perhaps they've gotten sensitive or there's a lot of that cupping marking. That is an indication there's enough cupping for that session for that person because we don't want to overdo it. But if she has a big knot there, I've taken the cup off, I've, I've assessed it accordingly. Sure, I'll go ahead and put the cup right back on it. It's all about creating that exchange, that stretch, not creating superficial congestion. And that's at least where I stay in my lane of body work, right? So we have the option, a lot of these moving cups now, again, reminding us, when I go to move that cup, I also, you see that lift in the tissue? I want to lift that cup up and make a stretch, but she is so stuck in these shoulders, I can't move it across that area easily. So you never force it. I love it when people feel 
things softening, right? And one of the, my favorite reactions from people is, or one of my favorite questions I should say, I should say, people ask if that's a hand or if that's a cup. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I keep going because they're also wondering if I have 10 hands. I never put so many cups on the body that people aren't aware of what's going on. They're not overwhelmed. But this lift and release is such a good way because these cups are pretty strong in pressure for her. I'm not trying to move them. I'm doing that stationary work, but to her comfort, right? I ask her, how do they feel? They feel good. They feel good. Yeah. And she likes deeper pressure for body work. So of course I could have deeper suction, could, but I have to warm it up so that negative pressure doesn't traumatize the tissue, creating a bruise. Because a bruise is a response to a traumatic contact, right? So that negative pressure shouldn't be traumatic either. Either direction can create traumatic responses. So if you're someone who loves to do these strong stationary cups, consider just a one, two, three, then go for your stationary cup. Sure, no problem. But just don't overdo it, right? It's all about working with that therapeutic comfort for that recipient in mind. And I don't wanna leave the cups on for too long, right? There's always, there's also the question of circulation challenges. Does somebody have lymphatic issues? Do they have blood challenges that you don't wanna over, overwork on somebody, right? Maybe they have fragile skin. My oldest client is 97 and she loves it when I cup her. I wrote a great article about cupping geriatric clients. I first met her because she heard about cupping and her family from ancient Greece were doing the ventoses and she loved the cupping on her back for coughs and colds. But I use cups on her 97 year old leg. I first met her when she was 92. But I use them on her leg because she has leg pain. And the vasculature and the, the tissue integrity is very thin with her. So we do a lot of the lift and release. She loves that decompression. She loves the feeling of the cups. And so that's how you can alter your basic, if you will, cupping technique to fit more clients. Because maybe you're working on a senior population. I also work on infants. And I'll use these small cups on babies a few months old to address colic, right? Maybe we're working on kids with asthma and we don't wanna have prolonged stationary cups. There are so many reasons why this technique is so beneficial because it warmed this client up very much. And now I, I fuse it in with a little bit of stationary cupping, several sets, right? I could take this and easily move it now, right? Her skin is so soft and pliable, I don't have to force it. And you see, I seep a little bit of air out to make it even better, right? I can lessen, I can lessen, take those, move them around. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite silicone ones for some muscle movements too. Some of this is meant to just feel good. Right. Because, you know, in my clinic, whether I'm doing like I talked about some of that post-surgical work or perhaps I'm just having someone who's stressed. Right. Any of us dealing with stress. That's where cupping helps you just calm the nervous system down. Now, also consider if you're familiar with these silicone cups, people see cups of all shapes, sizes, colors, materials. We have machines. Right. The aesthetic machines, the cupping machines that we have, they have a switch that is an automatic lift and release of different paces. Slower to sit there and milk the tissue, faster to stimulate it, and everything in between, right? That lift and release is what some of these aesthetic machines only offer. They don't even want the static suction because it is doing that skin washing and softening muscle and toning all at the same time. So, this technique. These squeezy cups, some people push them at the top. I need to save my thumbs. I squeeze them from the sides. And the stronger you squeeze them, the stronger the suction. So you just either have really good hand strength or use two hands if you have them, right? But I can pick that cup up with my hands. Look at the stretch in her skin, right? This feels 
like a deeper effect in their body without me adding too much pressure, right? So it is that you lift it so far, it affects so far into the body, and then you can start manipulating it. So perhaps I wanna knead through her muscle. This is another technique you get to see tonight, everyone, right? This rolling is like some of that kneading through muscles. So add that in to a lift and release and really work the muscle out. It's a really nice way to soften things up without tearing tissue, right? It's literally milking the soft tissue. Nothing here is forced. So, oh, and then I find a lovely adhesion and we wanna stay and focus on it, but I'm not here to treat, I'm here to demonstrate. <laughs> that is always my frustration. But you know, none of this should ever be overly, none, none of this should be painful. And this also helps me to assess because perhaps I'm working through a region that I know she has tension, right? She has chronic shoulder tension, a history of some injuries on this side. This helps me see, okay, while I'm sliding, right there, it's still stuck. And so maybe if that was sensitive for her, I again, add this lift and release in and I can leave it or I can slide, right? It is a variable application. You can really mix this into your body work because that's moving softer through that region now. It is instant gratification for a body worker. And that's where we really love to show people this, right? It's sticky. I can't slide over this region your favorite points in the shoulder blade, go ahead and put a cup on it. Hypersensitive on a lot of people. Lift and release. One, two, three, try it. Maybe less in your section, suction. Try to just manipulate this. And I've worked her quite a bit. She's not getting a lot of cupping marks, right? And she's getting nice and warm. Things are softer, right? The temperatures, the textures, her breathing, all of this tells a story of what the cupping is is changing for this client in this moment. And a lot of the times this lift and release, you don't have to use it in consecutive appointments because perhaps they've already experienced the change for the better and it's lasting, right? Because the body is miraculous. This one technique, I am a body worker. <clears throat> when I first met pups, they were amazing, but there were some interesting reactions. And the more you teach, the more you experience cups around the world, you have to try and make it applicable and available for everyone because cupping has become so popular, especially in these last 10 years, and it's getting more and more. But what we're seeing is people are doing things either beyond their scope, which was always an issue for us, or they're doing it and causing harm because they just don't know. And I always tell people, just take this one technique. I don't care where you train. Take this one technique with you and add it into what you're doing, whether it's been a month or a decade, or perhaps you've never seen cups. Start there. Let the stretch take an effect, right? Let them respond without overwhelming them with a stationary cup and maybe making them never want cups again. I have met so many people who don't like cup because of what's happened to them. I have convinced, excuse me, I have educated my clients to let me just try. And when I do just the lift and release on them, they're like, wow, I never knew cupping could feel like that. It feels good. And that is so important. At, at the end of the day, we want people to feel good. We want people to feel better. That's the, the nature of our profession, no matter what your profession is, if you're working on the body, right? So that's muscle. And obviously I can talk about this all day, but I have one more element to discuss with you. I'm gonna get her turned over and we're gonna talk about the abdomen. So just give me a moment to get her situated. So I'm gonna raise this side, go ahead and turn to your back and just slide down so your head is on the table and let me know when you're ready. I know you can finally turn over. <laughs> I love our, our demonstration people and go ahead and put the towel in place when you're ready, please. You ready? Okay, I, <laughs> I'm gonna bring your knees under. So it's always about making sure my models are comfortable even though they're not getting 100% of my attention, correct? She's under the covers keeping her face anonymous. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring you down here for a second. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the digestive system, okay? So this is always an interesting subject. And I remember when Tom and I started talking about this event, 
uh, how I, I do cupping for the colon. And there was a little question on exactly how we address that area. We work through the abdomen. Okay, so I am also trained with visceral manipulation and just the basic anatomy of the colon. It's such a benefit to receive cupping. So, um, you know, the abdomen holds so much tension, emotion. Its anatomy itself has different adipose tissue than anywhere on the body, so it can become easily inflamed. Um, and I love a good abdominal therapeutic session, but they can be a little invasive. Um, I've had them in different countries and I, I feel like my organs are happy I left the country in one piece. <laughs> so when I teach people cupping for the abdomen, lots of times people are very guarded and I understand you should protect your stomach. It is all of our visceral health. It is the core of our body and our being. The cups themselves though, the negative pressure of the cup, think of the shape of a cup, the house strip pockets, of every segment of the colon, think of that lift and release. We can affect muscle, muscle tissue, not only skeletal, but, so, but um, the peristalsis, the smooth muscles. And so doing cups in the abdomen with the lift and release is going to be the most stimulating for those house pockets of every segment of the colon. Now, there is a very methodical, logical way to address the colon. Um, in massage school, we're taught certain strokes. And I know in other medicinal practices, they're taught certain ways to do the colon. And that is how it should be done in your practice. But when you're using cups for the abdomen itself, it is very specific to anatomy and knowing that there aren't any visceral contraindications that should be addressed. For example, perhaps somebody has foreign objects in their stomach. We're not going to do this. They maybe had lap band surgery. Perhaps they have abdominal meshing, right? If maybe they've had diastasis recti or colon resections, anything that would be normally contraindicated for the abdomen is likewise contraindicated for cupping in the abdomen and the same for the whole body. So we really make sure that's understood, right? We're not cupping over varicose veins, for example. And we talk about how Understanding that a varicose vein can have the positive pressure of your hand, but the negative pressure can further damage that already harmed vessel. So you can use the lift and release around a varicose vein, and that's understanding how you can address, for example, a leg. But in the abdomen, especially with so much guarding, every single class, people come in and the first day we're in the stomach, they're like, Really? I just, I just got here. <laughs> but we start with the back, right? And then we work right into the abdomen to hone in on your sensitivities with your skill. And this technique is how we get there. Furthermore, there's also applications in the abdomen for acid reflux. And you have to understand what this lift and release does, how it affects those tonic muscles to enhance that person's digestive system that is having an issue. Again, your, your tools of diagnosis, your methods of assessment are to your discretion. But I talk about the body on a physiological level and I look, about the, I look at the anatomy. And again, I'll leave the clinical diagnosis and um, application to you. But if you work in the abdomen, this is so important to understand with this technique especially. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of it in her abdomen. And we're gonna work over one section of her colon. Just making sure she's nice and comfortable. Thank you. Okay, so working in the abdomen. I'm going to address just the descending to the sigmoid colon. Hold on a second, I gotta bring that over. So I just moved myself because I wanted to let her turn and make herself comfortable. There we go. All right, so getting in there for a good view. Now, remember, we talked about how you need a good lubricant. Uh, you can do moving cups in the abdomen, right? But I never start with that because as I discuss the fact that the house pockets are what we're trying to stimulate, right? Constipation is such an issue with so many people of uh, varying degrees. 
there are different applications for diarrhea, right? I'm not talking about that tonight. This is a whole introduction to a technique, not teaching you all of these applications. So I want you to just, if you're somebody who works in the stomach and perhaps you use cups, consider this technique as a desensitizer, right? It's an introduction of cups to such a sensitive area. You know, some people who come in, for example, complaining about constipation, there can be emotions stuck in there. And the emotional component as well with cupping, you know, someone like Dr. Candace Perth talked about the emotions that these can get stuck in the body and the neural peptides and the receptor points in her book, The Molecules of Emotion is beautiful to convey the scientific aspect of that. You have Dr. Upledger talks about energy cysts in the body and John Barnes in the emotional, if you're a fascia person, but we all know emotions can be stored in the body, just like anything else, like some of that interstitial debris and all of these, all of these things that cupping can release. The emotional aspect, if you go to press into someone's stomach and do abdominal massage, it can be sensitive and they can have you know, a guarding before you really get into the therapy you're trying to offer this person. So this technique, it's welcome. Now I, I say a funny um, example, but I, I'll give you a, a snippet of it. One of my students did not want her stomach done. And I said, I never forced anyone to do anything, but she brought, you know, she came with her friend and her friend's like, no, you're letting me do your stomach. <laughs> she was so guarded. And I, I love when people come together for that experience to share, right? Because I, I, that's all I want is a sharing educational environment. The woman that was so guarded for her abdomen, that turned out to be her favorite application. And she brought that home to her clients and introduced a whole new world of body work to herself. Like it, it kind of reignited part of her practice. And we love that because this technique does that for people, no matter your history of cupping, this lift and release, and especially the abdomen game changers again. So if you're going to work in the stomach, it is a comfortable suction and a lift. And I release that tension and I release the cup. Okay. So it is a lift. It's a negative pressure and I release it and I let it go. Think about it. The cup has that, the lift and release has a plunger like effect on the body. Most probably commonly understood when we talk about the colon and the movements. So leaving that to your understanding, my lift and release, now I'm just segmenting a little bit backwards in the colon rather than pressing. This is a very comfortable light to medium suction, grabbing the skin, grabbing some of that paniculus adipose in the front, but not irritating the viscera. I am stimulating the viscera. Oftentimes you can hear some of that digestive, right? That board where you may start moving through the area. You want to lift that tissue, create that stretch, stimulate that peristalsis. And section by section, you will feel things move. So perhaps you are someone who loves that sliding cup. If I start with a sliding cup and you're working on someone with constipation who has these binding issues, moving cups have to have a fluid space to travel over. This lift and release is going to be that changer. It softens as you go. It really does change how you work. How's that feeling, client? Good. And sometimes it's ticklish, right? But it should never be painful. That is what this technique does. It tests through the region. So you see, there's always that lift to the ceiling, okay? So it's understanding that working in the abdomen, that negative pressure is welcome because it's such a tight region on so many people. And we never do any of this, you know, the hour after digestion, if there's core temperature issues, again, to your own clinical discretion, understanding what cups can do. But there is a lot to all of this. The digestive component alone with that lift and release. If you've never cupped in the abdomen, I don't just say go home and have at it, get some training. But that lift and release is how you approach the stomach and every single person who's experienced it loves it. Almost 20 years of sharing that with the world. That is definitely something that people shocks every single time. So 
I'm going to help her just kind of exit and we're going to continue on. Let me get her a little pivot here. All right, you're welcome to go that way. Thank you. Thank you. Just be careful getting off the table. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Thank you. All right, so she is situated. Thank you for giving me that moment to get her over where she needs to be. All right, any concerns with scarring? So yeah, there is a lot to be understood when you enter the abdomen. Yes, abdominal scarring is very important to address and individually assess, right? So for example, if, if let's talk about a C-section scar, right? There is a lot to understand about working in the abdomen and especially when you have abdominal scarring, like that's one of my most specific scars we constantly get questions about and we address. So I'll bring back in um, the anatomical specificity along with some of the neurological components. So one of my examples, um, a C-section, all the layers of tissue that are cut and the viscera that's involved, your cup size has to be relative to the area you're working on. So you're not affecting too much of the abdomen. Your, your focus work is just where it is. I had a PT at one of my classes completely questioned me. Thinks it doesn't, it doesn't work. She's already had cupping. She's fine. She just wants the hours. I'm like, great, welcome. <laughs> but she had a C-section that was numb for six years. Six years, she had no feeling in that scar line. And so we did the demonstration, always testing with lift and release. We barely did anything more. It was less than 10 minutes. That lift and release, she's like, I feel pressure, but I don't feel much more. And we had the smaller cups and we worked into that area and we moved the limbs and we worked the scar and addressed it as we suggest. She got up off that table. She's like, I can't even tell you, but I feel everything right now. I say, it just, cause the nerves, right? That breaking up, causing those micro traumas and encouraging the neovascularization, the angiogenesis, that healthy betterment of tissue. Cups do all that when you do it logically. So scarring in the abdomen, a C-section's intense. Maybe they've had those resections. The first question I will always ask is, are they released to receive body work? Ask their surgeon. You know, we talk about oncology care even, things like radiation, lymph nodes, everything. If someone can receive body work, therapeutic body work, chances are they can receive cups, but you have to understand that there's so many different ways to use cups. It's not one cup size fits all. And that's really how we approach it, right? That lift and release, that 97-year-old that client, those people with the scars, those people with vascular concerns or fragile tissue. Maybe you have body hair and you want to cup someone and it flat out won't stick. The lift and release gives you a second, right? I even teach people when you're doing the facial cupping, if they have beards, I'll teach you how to pull the beard because you still get the lift and you're encouraging that stretch because that improves the tone also. So it's all just a variation. And this technique is the one you start with. And there's so much more. So to that, I say in summary, right? We have a summary and I think, I don't think you have this slide, Tom. I think the next one's just my information. Um, unless you have the summary up there. I don't think you do. But ultimately the lift and release is a, uh, I'm ending at 740 because I got really excited. I'll, I'm gonna keep talking a little bit more. But um, the lift and release, it is a wonderfully simple an effective technique to add into your existing cup practices, right? Regardless of suction pressure, the technique offers, this technique offers a world of change to therapeutic body workers. Yeah, you can go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to give her a little moment to sneak out the back door. So, um, and ultimately the lift and release helps maximize the therapeutic responses of many cupping applications and ultimately ensures that the comfort and safety of the client is prioritized so that everyone can enjoy the benefits of cups. So this technique, I hope you take it into your practices, whatever that may include, and you try it, right? Just try it. Now, I did show you the face cups. I also demonstrated the manual pump cups. I'm really a big fan of those and so many applications and the control of the suction pump, right? Because you don't have to have really strong suction at first. You wanna have those variables for everybody. The silicone ones are fun. The question always comes up of glass and fire cupping. Now, with respect, we do leave the fire cupping to the acupuncture community because it is 
legal only for acupuncturists, right? So um, yeah, I'll get the face cupping question in one second. Yep. So fire is solely designated legal and liability for acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So when I first learned cupping, yeah, I learned fire. It was fascinating. But now, because so many people are doing fire cupping, the massage boards have said that it's not approved for massage therapists. So we don't teach that anymore. If you know how to use fire cupping, then you keep it into your practice. But to do the lift and release with the fire cupping, the fact is that it's, it's the constant ignition and the warmth on the surface that can actually it potentially burn the client. So it's not, it's more like the flash cupping. It's this, this lift and release is an adaptation of flash cupping, but with one cup in your hand. So I do not recommend fire cupping with the lift and release because it's too much repetitive warming of the surface of the cup. And the time that you use the lift and release, it's a retention of one to 10 seconds, depending on your intention, right? You don't want to have that fire lit at the same time. So perhaps this isn't for the fire cupping, but maybe you use a silicone cup a couple of times and then put your fire cup on. Or maybe you use all kinds of different pump cups. I've seen the ones with the squeeze bulbs. They have a squeeze bulb at the top and the glass at the bottom. Those, I know a lot of acupuncturists who keep those both by side by side. They use the squeeze bulb for the lift and release and then they put the fire cup on right? So create something that works for you. Uh, the face cups, they, they are from a couple of different distributors. Uh, Tom is going to have access to them through, through Camwell. We're, we're working on things, right? So, but they can, they're really great face cups out there in the world. Um, there was a question that came up just now about an appendectomy scar. Tom, do you have access to that, please? So are you talking about the question that's in the, uh, the chat box? Yeah, something just popped up about yeah. a question so about an appendectomy. Old appendectomy and intestinal scarring. Sure, yeah. Uh, again, I would ask if that person is approved for abdominal massage, right? And if your intention is to work over that scar, I'm, I'm going to ask more questions. Is it an atrophic or is it a hypertrophic or keloid scar, right? What's the sensation with the hands? That lift and release is the way that you test it with cups, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sight unseen, I never say yes or no. I ask a few more questions and suggest that the person assesses them in a different way also. So yeah, thank you for repeating that question. I saw it came up and it went away fast. So ultimately, that's really what I have to offer with this technique tonight. I know it's a little bit, it's about 15 minutes shy, but I saw so many questions coming up. Oh yeah, major question with keloids. So keloids and hypertrophic scars are very special and we do address them in my scar tissue class, but you have to be ever so cautious and there can be some really awesome results with keloids, but you have to learn how to approach it from the periphery and then how to test it and understand that person's healthy constitution as well. Right. And there's temperatures and sensations to understand you're not overstimulating those scars. And I will I'll leave that subject for a little bit more research. Yep. Great. OK, I have some more questions coming up. There is uh, Tom. Do you want to. So, Tom, do you want anything else I can share with you before we get into questions? Because I love questions. I know we're shy a little bit, but I want to make yeah, sure I address it. It's 746. So we're leaving the last about 15 minutes for questions. So I'll, you know, you can read the questions or I can read the questions if you can't see them. If you could read them for me, that would be great because oh, my yeah, screen, sure. it doesn't have the access other than a moment. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. And well, I, um, I'm, I'm going to start with my question first. How do you sterilize the silicone cups? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the silicone cups, because they are a more porous material as well as the, the plastic, and we don't do it. We don't do any bleeding cups with these. Please understand massage therapists, we're not bleeding. So hopefully if you're bleeding, you're using the glass and your higher levels of sterilization. There are some approved disinfectant uh, products out there. 
So we wash every cup and soap and water, make sure they're air dried or you can dry them obviously with towels. I know people that use UV sterilization for some of them. I have a couple of spray disinfectants. It's uh, equivalent to barbicide, but for the spa or therapeutic body workers. And it does meet the CDC standards. So I made sure I found a couple of good distributors. And so we wash them, we disinfect them, we air dry them and they're safe for skin contact once they're dry. All right, fantastic. Maybe you can, uh, you know, we can share that with the group on a follow up. Yeah, on I would love to. Yeah, I ha I'm happy to share that information. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, do you have any good resources for cupping for GI issues such as GERD? Such as, such as GERD? Such as GERD, yeah, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Yeah, yep, I heard, I heard it. My phone just kind of broke up. So there are some good resources. Um, let me see if I have the ones written here. So right here, I don't have access to it for this presentation. I do have some of them in the back of my book because that's where it came from in the first place. There's a couple of articles from the National Institute of Health. If you do go on their website, there is a library that talks about it. And there is one in specific that is escaping my mind right now, but it does talk about the difference of a hiatal hernia, low grade and higher grades and GERD and how the cupping is working to improve that tonic, um, to relax that hypertonic contraction in the tonic muscle. That's why we have the application for the acid reflux and the GERD because of the way it manipulates and you know, thousands of hours and years of the same results every time with this application. So yeah, there are some great articles. Um, They're like I said, in the book or just go to National Institute of Health and look up cupping and GERD. Okay, does any, uh, I don't have any more questions in the uh, the chat box. Does anybody else have any questions that you want to ask Shannon? I saw a lot of them coming in, so I just figured that they would make, make some time for them. <laughs> So, um, you know what, before we uh, conclude, I'm going to share your resources with people. Let me just share my screen real quick. This is the, so you can, and I will share this uh, again uh, on a follow-up email, but this is for people who watch the recording for the future. You'll have this information. Okay. There was just two questions that came up about something about Kim Wo, okay. um, if asking if you had something, and then something else also. Does Kim Wo have your book? Uh, no, we don't have your book, but I, is your book is probably available on Amazon? Is that fair? Yep, it's available wherever books are sold. And when I'm in New York next month, I think I gave you a book right before New York shut down. I can bring you another I mean, one, so I'm bringing you some other stuff. <laughs> I, I think I do have it somewhere. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So there's one that uh, came in. It says, I know TCM generally restricts abdominal cupping. How do you decide what's safe and what's not? Right. So again, with TCM, there are different reasons why you're guarding and not cupping in certain areas. And understanding that, leave it to your professional discretion. If that is not something you are comfortable doing, please don't do it. But, you know, we are having people, I know acupuncturists who spend so much time in the abdomen with cups and they do some pretty aggressive cupping in the abdomen. So I think it does go back to your school of training. Um, and I leave it to your professional discretion at that point. I'm not here to change your methods of application. Uh, I give you a technique and I give you its potential and I let you take it home if you're comfortable and if not, so be it, no worries. Understand also though, if you're not comfortable working in the abdomen with the cups, if you want to indirectly affect it, there's the lumbosacral plexus around the back, and you're welcome to work there to affect the abdominal cavity with the nerve.